Hi everyone, Dr. Jeff back this week. Uh, actually this week we had an interesting topic because it's something I've never talked about before and it's not something I see a lot of, uh, but uh, I think a lot of people may have it and they don't even know they have it. Uh, and it's called a diaphragm spasm. Yep, so first off, what are the diaphragms? The diaphragms are the muscles that help you breathe. So they're right about here. They act as like a pump for airflow. So when you inhale, they move downwards. And when you exhale, they move back upwards. So they pump up and down for airflow. They're located right about here, attached to your mid back, so attached to your thoracic spine. They're innervated by a nerve called the phrenic nerve, which originates from the nerve C3, 4, 5, just from your neck here. One way to remember this is C3, 4, 5 help keep your diaphragm alive. So if you injure these nerves, um, the diaphragm's in a lot of trouble, so it's pretty important. Yeah, so these are those people that like to do deep dives in a shallow pool. Uh, and they land and hit their head and they break their they break their neck and if it happens above C3 they're going to die because the diaphragm is going to die you can't breathe um, so kind of important to uh, uh, nerve um, but a diaphragm spasm people a diaphragm spasm it kind of feels like a bit of a, a, a fullness or a sore in your side uh, sometimes with people running uh, they get a bit of a stitch in their side and and uh, that's kind of, kind of more of a flutter than we call a spasm um, they kind of stop and they, and they change their breathing and it goes away. Yeah, the diaphragm spasm is actually a spasm, just like a spasm in your calf or, or in your hamstring. It's going to be quite painful. Uh, again, a lot of people don't really have it, but feel like a pain in your side, radius around the front. Uh, we often have to differ from a cracked rib or an or a, uh, intercostal strain. Um, but uh, it's, a, it's a spasm. It happens in, in women more than men for some reason. Uh, it usually results in trauma. So, you know, you get sucker punched in the stomach. I've actually seen it happen with an airbag going off in your car, uh, a fall, uh, a certain way. But the most common cause is overuse. So this is people that have had a chronic cough. And they're coughing, they're coughing, they're coughing. That, di that diaphragm has to go up and down and, and kind of jerk a lot. Same with a, a, a huge sneeze. I've seen it happen with a huge sneeze before. Um, hiccups. Interesting that hiccups, uh, you know, hiccups, chronic hiccups, that diaphragm has to, to really jerk up and down. Uh, can cause a diaphragm spasm. But on the flip side of it, uh, hiccups could be a, a sign that you have a diaphragm spasm. Yep. So it's kind of back and forth. Um, so yeah, so when you get this, uh, it could be difficult to breathe. Uh, it could be some pain in your side. It feels kind of full. Um, and yeah, you just really can't, uh, can't do much. And there is different treatment approaches for a diaphragm spasm. If it's less severe, if you're out for a run and you're noticing like a flutter or just something feels off, then you can rest, take a break, focus on your breathing. One thing you can do is diaphragm breathing. So you breathe in with your nose and then out with your mouth. So it helps relax the diaphragm. Uh, but if the pain feels more severe and like a tense spasm, then that would be a sign to come see a physiotherapist or a chiropractic. Yeah, so so it's a spasm, so just like a spasm in your calf or your, or your hamstring or your quad, we have to kind of massage it out or trigger point it out. So the one thing I do here is I have to get my hand kind of, we'll demonstrate a minute, I have to get my hand in, I have to get underneath your rib cage, you have to find where the spasm is, sometimes it can be front, sometimes more side. Find that spasm, trigger point it out, massage it out so I get you to breathe in and out, try and capture that, capture that diaphragm. Uh, trigger point is not the most pleasant sensation, let me tell you. Uh, but just like it's stretching or massaging or any other type of, of, of cramp, uh, once we get it relaxed, it feels much, much better. And then we'll demonstrate this. So we're, we're going to demonstrate with Willow here as if she has one on her right hand side. Um, she doesn't really have one, but uh, we'll demonstrate uh, my technique here today. Um, so essentially what I have to do is I have to get on the bottom of her ribs. And as I go in here, I'm going to be able to find, she'll tell me where it's kind of, oh, it's a little tender there. <laughs> Uh, she's going to tell me where it's a little bit tender. So what I'm going to have her do is I'm going to try and get in the, on that and then she's going to take a big breath in. I'm going to feel a diaphragm come right into my hand as I feel there. And I'm going to kind of feel around to see if there's, there's a little tenderness there and, and, and get her to breathe out. All right, and I'm going to move, capture it again, breathe in and hold for a second and breathe out. And then again, breathe in. So I'm just trying to get in there, find the trigger point, try and massage it out a little bit and out. And this may take four or five, even up to eight passes to try and get in on it. It's not the most comfortable thing uh, that can be done. But the whole idea is find out where it's coming from, uh, where the spasm is in there, and try and uh, trigger it out and make it feel better. Right, so that's it for our video today. Hope you enjoyed this 
topic of diaphragm spasms, something you don't see every day. Um, and like always, if you have any questions or future video ideas, please leave them in the comments down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Yep, and here at Goals and Wellness, we've, we've got, got your back. back.